Welcome back everyone, my name is Drew Bullock and today we are gonna be going over a tour of our garage gym. To start this off, we put in a garage gym. Um, doesn't mean that it has to be in your garage, it could be in your home. We just, this is the space that we have. We have a tandem style garage uh, where we have this extended part. So that's where we put our gym. So we're essentially working with a single car garage space. So not a whole lot of space, but we're making it work. If we look at our main piece that we have in here, most of our stuff in our garage gym is by Rep Fitness. We did you know a couple bulk orders by them. And then we also have some pieces by Rogue Fitness, which we also really like. But let's go over the main piece, which is our power rack. This is the PR4000 power rack by Rep Fitness. Um, when you're looking at this rack, it has all the laser engraving every five. So you have 20, 25, 30. So it shows you exactly where you want to put it. You do get one inch hole spacing anywhere from here to here, which is your bench area. And then after that, the hole spacing gets a little bit wider. Um, whereas if you went with the PR5000, you're gonna get this inch hole spacing throughout the entire thing, which is nice. Um, if that's something that you want, it's probably personal preference, but we've had this for a while now and the hole spacing on this is, is great. You really don't need any more than this. So uh, essentially when you do your rack and you're customizing it online, you pick out every little piece of it. So, the first thing that you do is you pick out your uprights, which are your four tall uh, steel three by threes right here. These are the 93 inch uprights. You can get 80 inch uprights as well, which are gonna be a little bit shorter. So depending on the height that you have, uh, you know, wherever you're putting your gym at, that is a consideration to make, especially if you're gonna be adding a pull-up bar on here. So we went with the 93 inch uprights because we have a little bit of additional space. And then if you look in the inside of the rack, you have your cross members, but you get your two bottom ones and then you get your two at the top. Uh, we went with the 30 inch cross members. This is the middle of the road. They have ones that are slightly shorter at 24 inches. They have ones that are wider around 42, but these are the 30 inch cross members. So this is gonna basically dictate the amount of space that you have inside your rack. So if you move these J cuffs to the inside, and you're utilizing this to do squats and you take your weight off, the cross members are basically gonna be how much space you have to work inside of your rack. I suggest going the 30 inch road uh, route that we did because it gives plenty of space uh, with also not taking up too much room in your gym. So 30 inch I think is the way to go. If you look at the J cups, like I mentioned previously, these are just your standard J cups. Um, which you can move around. Uh, they do have other ones, but these, um, you know, there's really nothing wrong with these. These, these do the job. Um, just put them in, kind of line them up, and they turn down. If you look at the safeties we went with, so these are flip down safeties by Rep Fitness. And what's nice about them is with the Rep Fitness and everything's laser engraved, you know exactly where you're putting these in. So if I want to put them in on the 15 hole mark, I put it in here and in the front. And they flip down. What's nice about these is they're straight, unlike some that kind of are the rope style and they hang down. So when I put this in here, we know that for squats, if we put this in on the laser engraving of 15, they're going to be perfect for when we go down in our squat. We're going to be about an inch over these. So we really like the flip down safeties that we went with. If you pan to the top here, if you're looking at pull-up bars, which is another attachment that you can do, we went with the multi-grip pull-up bar. So in the front here, you're gonna get an inch and a quarter diameter. And in the back here, you're gonna get a two inch diameter. So you can do pull-ups from the back, which is a really a big grip here, or you can do the inch and a quarter, which is in the front. Also, you have the multi-different, multi-grip. 
So you have your straight here and then your wide grip or angled and a very wide grip here. So it's a, it's a pretty versatile piece um, and you can do a, a lot of different things with it. It also helps stabilize the rack. So this is the multi-grip pull-up bar. If you look at the bottom here, um, we did go with the front foot extensions on our rack. The reason that we went with these um, is basically because of our setup in our garage gym and the type of slab foundation that we have. So if you have a newer home, um, our house is about eight years old and we have post-tension slab. So essentially if you have post-tension slab in your garage, you cannot drill into there. There's usually a stamp somewhere in your garage that says post-tension slab, do not drill. So um, if you look at this rack on the sides here, there are two holes on every one of your uprights where if you buy this rack, Rep Fitness sends you really huge concrete anchor bolts that you can bolt this rack down so it's not gonna go anywhere. That wasn't an option for us, so we went with these front foot extensions, which also have a hole to bolt down, but just having these really keeps the rack from moving around, especially if you're putting weight on the outside of the J-cups or you're hanging from the front, you're really gonna rock the rack back and forth. So having these foot extensions on here does stabilize it a lot. So if you can't drill into your cement, that's an option that you could go with. If you look at the back of the rack here, we added on the addition of the lat low uh, attachment. This is really nice and helps you do a lot of different things with your rack that you would typically find at a gym that you would go to having a gym membership. So this allows you to do lat pull downs here and we have a couple different, you can get you know different chains from Home Depot but have different lengths here essentially. Uh, but you can do lap pull downs, you can do tricep dips if you buy an attachment such as, you know, a rope or a straight bar. If you look down here at the bottom, you can also connect into the bottom here. And it has this really nice foot brace here that is adjustable here. So you can pull this out, push it in, um, and you can do low rows or you can attach in here and do standing uh, bicep curls. If you have an ankle uh, weight there, you can attach it. And you can do different exercises um, as far as like your glutes and uh, you can do some hamstring exercises. So this piece is, is really cool. We're really happy with this one. Um, it isn't a, a style where it's like a weight stack. It just has these, these big prongs here that you slide on your bumper plates or your iron plates. And then it just glides up on these guys here. I will say that with these, you do have to clean these um, you know, maybe once every week or so, and then you do have to put a white lithium grease on these to get it to slide well, or it's gonna be really tough to get these down. So it's not gonna be as perfect as something at a gym. Um, so there is a little bit of maintenance to do on these. So if that's something uh, that you're looking at is adding this attachment, just know that you're going to have to do that to get it to slide well. Um, also, you know, before I forget, along with this, this does add the rear stabilization bar to the entire backside of your rack. So that does really keep your rack from shifting side to side or tweaking or moving. So that along with the front foot extensions really helps this rack from moving around. Um, let's see, if I get this attachment over here, and this is where we store this, you can store stuff on your rack pretty much anywhere you want, but this is the leg roller attachment. So if you're going to be doing lap pull downs, uh, I highly suggest to you getting a leg roller. What this does is if I put it in the level five, which that's the one that we use and put this down, you can utilize this to lock it in place. But essentially, if you were to scoot your bench under here, what it does is your legs, your thighs are gonna be up under here and it's gonna keep your body from lifting up off of your bench when you're trying to do lap pull downs. So, you can get away without this guy, um, but as soon as you start putting some, you know, decent weight on there, depending on how much you weigh, you are, your butt's gonna start lifting up off the seat. So having one of these leg roller attachments is gonna solve that problem. And it is, uh, it is a pretty cheap uh, attachment to get, and the pad on here is really nice. So um, pretty satisfied with that. Uh, we were talking about the bench, so we might as well just go over it, but I'll move it into frame here. But this is our AB3000 bench by Rep Fitness. What's cool about this bench is it's essentially three or four benches, depending on how you look at it, in one. 
the way it is now is a flat regular bench, which you can buy benches out there that that's all they do, they're just a flat bench. But this is a flat bench here. It adjusts with this back piece here. If you just lift this up, now you have a decline bench. So you have a flat bench, you have a decline bench, and then also, this may be kind of loud when I do it, because you can pick this up or you can just, this is how easy it adjusts. All the way up to straight, um, if you wanted to do a shoulder press. So you can use this as a chair to do shoulder press. It has five different increases as you go along. So you can use it as an incline bench, you can use it as a flat bench and a decline bench. It's super easy to put back. To and then if you look at the seat here on this side, it does have an adjustment where you can pull out here and this piece does move up and down. So if you're doing incline and you want the seat to move up and down, this does adjust as well. And then it has these pads here for your feet. So if you are doing incline, you can lock your feet into this here and it gives you a nice uh, stable base for when you're doing different exercises on here. Uh, so it's a pretty great uh, bench. Um, if you look at it, at the end of this video, I am going to go over prices of all of this so you guys know exactly how much this stuff costs and give you guys a total of what our garage gym looks like and how much it costs us to build. So we'll go over the price of this, but I will say that this bench or everything that can do is a fraction of the price from some other different brands out there. So I highly recommend this. If we move along, um, we won't go over all the different little attachments that we have in our garage gym, but some of the main pieces that we have here on this wall is our plates. So we have a bunch of different bumper plates. We have, you know, 45s down here. We have a pair of 35s, 25s and 10s. This rack also houses our uh, Rogue Ohio power bar. Um, so that's all of our plates and our power bar here. They also do make things where you can hang these on the wall, but if you get one of these trees that has the sleeves in the bottom, um, it has a sleeve on the backside too, which we do have a, a little bar back here, um, but that can hold your bar on there. Uh, and it's a great space saver. If you look here, we did get the hex dumbbells by Rep Fitness. Uh, the knurling on them is, is pretty nice. Um, and we essentially just went with a set uh, just so that we could get some, some plates, or I mean some, uh, some dumbbells in here. So we went with the five to 50 uh, range and they go up by five. So five, 10, 15, 20, all the way down to 50. Uh, they're pretty nice uh, having the hex rubber and then also having the horse stall mats on the floor rubber um, does really protect your garage flooring or your foundation. Uh, and then next to it here, we did add in an air bike. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, we still want to park our cars in our garage and only utilize this extended space. Um, so when we were looking at our garage gym, we didn't have any kind of cardio pieces. So we are looking at a rower, but they take up a lot of space. We went with an air bike. Um, this air bike doesn't take up a whole lot of space. We were able to pick this up for $400, um, brand new. Uh, I will say that's because we have a buddy that owns a uh, sports uh, essentially store that sells used and new equipment. So we picked this up for 400. I do think it retails for around six or 650 brand new. Um, it's essentially the same exact thing as a Rogue Echo bike that you may have seen at gyms and air bike, but a lot of resistance with this. Um, and it's just a great piece for cardio. Let's see. Um, there's not too much more. We, we added in a, a pull up bar here by Rogue Fitness. Uh, which is nice because you can attach things and throw resistance uh, bands over it. And then behind it, we put in some TRX style cables uh, attached in, which you can do pull-ups, you can put your feet in here, and you can do different kind of crunches. Um, and then we just utilize the space the best that we could. So uh, obviously we have our water heater in here. So we utilized a little bit of space that we had in order to put up a uh, rack in here that houses our yoga mats. It houses some of our different attachments as far as lat pull downs, slam balls, and some kettlebells, different stuff that we have in here, all the little, little things. And then if you kind of just pan around, you'll see that we have a couple different hangers on the wall. Um, this one by Rogue, um, this one's really cool. It's just, it has a bunch of prongs that stick out. 
and you can put all your different goodies on here. So you have your uh, guys to keep your weights on there. You have, you know, wristbands, a belt. You can put resistance bands on here, or you can put your jump ropes. Um, but this is a cool little hanger to have on here. So, um, but yeah, uh, this is our garage gym. I hope you like the video. Stick around right after this. I'm going to go over the price and break it down by the rack and exactly how much all this stuff costs. So you guys know, is this something that you guys would like to put together? Because essentially a garage gym budget can be very small or very, very large. Um, if you like this video, you want to see more fitness and nutrition related videos like this, please subscribe, like this video and hit those bell notifications. That way, you know, when my video drops next week, see you guys. So I told you guys I would give you the numbers of how much our garage gym cost. Uh, so I'm going to go over that. I wrote it down on a piece of paper because I want to make sure that you get the correct dollar amounts for how much this stuff costs and how much it can cost to build a garage gym. So when I added up my power rack and all the different accessories that I went over with you that I have on there, and this includes the lat low pull down behind me, um, it looks like my total was right around $1,600 for the rack with all the attachments. And then I have my AB3000 adjustable bench was 269. Let's see, my dumbbell rack was 139 and then the hex dumbbell set five through 50 pounds. Those, uh, these guys right here. So five through 50 pounds, um, they are $689. Then you have bumper plates and the bumper tree uh, for all my bumper plates and the bumper tree was 600. The air bike, we went over that, so that we got that for $400. And then the horse stall mats were $200. Uh, we have five of them, and they were about $45 a piece. So in all, our garage gym is looking to be about $3,900. Um, you know, there are some other things that we threw in here uh, as far as um, pull-down bars. You know, we painted in here. Uh, we put in mirrors, we ran some electric, our buddy ran electric. Uh, if I turn around here, you can see we got a fan up here. Um, so that blows air into here, kind of gives us a nice circulation. Uh, but there was some other things, little things that we did in here. Uh, but overall, you're probably looking at about four grand for what you saw in the video. So I don't think it's too bad, especially because there's some gym memberships that, you know, if you go to, there's a gym in Arizona called Lifetime Fitness they are averaging around 100 to 120 dollars a person so there's a lot of people that go to that gym and for a couple that's 240 dollars a month so you know you guys do the math over time the garage gym will pay for itself and you know in my channel i talk about you know busy lifestyles and fitting in fitness into a busy lifestyle so honestly um having a garage gym saves a lot of time but Overall, those are the figures. This gym costs about $4,000, but you can do it for as expensive as you want or as cheap as you want. You don't need a power rack. You could get, you know, a box jump and a barbell, maybe some dumbbells. Uh, you could go as minimalist as you want or go as extreme as you want. So, uh, but yeah, that's it. I hope you guys like this. Again, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe and then hit that bell notification because I'm gonna have a, a video drop next week. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be about. I'm still figuring out that content, but I will have another video drop next week. So please tune into that. All right. I'll see you guys next week.